Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. I am John Kurtz, talking college football and conference realignment every single day here on this channel. Click subscribe if you're a college football fan. I would really appreciate it. I would also appreciate it if you liked the video and commented. That helps me, but also it gives you a chance to be a part of the conversation, and I love hearing what you guys have to say. So what makes college football fans great is the passion. So I had a chance to talk with Gene Taylor, who is the athletic director at Kansas State, and he shared some great insight about what's happening right now with conference realignment. And that starts with why he thinks actually we're done for a little while in terms of seeing dominoes falling and movement on the conference realignment front. Also, some very good info, maybe a little nugget about TV contracts coming up. And if you're a K-State fan, I save some of that stuff for the end. So if you're just a general college football fan, you're going to get that stuff at the beginning of the interview. The back half is specific to K-State. What does Gene Taylor think he needs to be doing right now to best position K-State in conference realignment as it continues. So without further ado, I'll shut up. Here's the interview with Gene Taylor. Well, how would you characterize where the tenor is of the league right now, in particular, obviously, with the, the eight teams outside of Texas and Oklahoma? I think with the eight teams, it's almost galvanized just a little bit. Um, you know, you had the issue in Texas where they had the, the other schools, you know, testify in front of legislative folks. I think, you know, the more we talk about what our options are and, and what's the best you know, route to take? We keep saying that's best for us to stay together. The longer we stay together, the more you know strength it gives us collectively. Uh, and so I think our conversations are right more about let's, how do we move forward together? What's the best path to take? We haven't really solidified anything or even headed down a certain direction. Just you know, for now there is time on our hands. Although people maybe sometimes don't believe that because. Because the Grand Rides has four more years left on it till you know through twenty four twenty five, um, we do have some time. And the best thing for us is to stay together because if we start to fall apart, then we lose the Grand Rides, we lose all the dollars that go along with that, and that put us in a good position. Gene Taylor talking with us, K State Athletic Director, and you know you you mentioned rumors. There have obviously been plenty of those here in the last few weeks. But people talk about Kansas in the Big Ten. People talk about West Virginia in the ACC, Iowa State in the Big Ten, potentially. Uh, how, how much trust do you feel like there is among the schools right now that, hey, we are going to stay together versus everybody having to watch out for number one at the end of the day, too? It just seems like it would be very difficult to, to trust anybody at this point in time because there is so much going on there. Well, I think you kind of got to – You've got to do both, really. You got to trust what they're saying, but at the same time, you got to kind of look out for, you know, put yourself in position um, individually to to build your resume and best you can. And but I, you know, I think there's there's enough frustration and anger and hurt with how it all unfolded that nobody wants to do that again, um, and then do that to their other partners because obviously they, you know, how they felt about how Texas and Oklahoma treated. Of the eight of us, and so I think there's a little bit of that. I think you know when you look at the dollars and cents of it, um, you know, right right now there's a lot of rumors, but those are the conferences. They're you know the Big Ten doesn't need to add anybody. Uh, they're fine where they are. Their money is plenty as it is. You know, the Pac-12 is probably one that has you know um, maybe right now the most you know challenging because of TV revenue and all that stuff. Uh, ACC has a grant of rights that goes through the 30, you know, 2035 or something like that. So, you know, there's a lot of rumors out there that I don't think people know the difficulty of, of just, you know, the various situations in each of the conferences. So, you know, I think we just have to understand that there's going to be rumors that we have to you know, stay true to each other and, and move forward best we can as the eight of us. How optimistic are you about something working out with the Pac-12 in light of Bob Bowlesby's six-hour meeting with, uh, and I'm, I'm going to botch his name like I do every single time, but George Klievkoff? Klievkoff? Um, yeah, I don't know how to say it either. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit yeah. better. Um, how, how optimistic are you about something winding up happening down the road with the Pac-12 right now? Well, you know, I think it's I don't think it's exploratory. Um, and, and like I said, we haven't had any specific conversations as to, any direction that we're going, um, I think all those things are way, way too early to, you know, have a have a conversation about in detail. We actually are going to Dallas here at the end of the month um, to just really start having more face to face, in depth conversations about what our options are. So, you know, I think for Bob to meet the commissioner from the Pac-12 and just, you know, 
get a sense of where they are and make a sense of where we are and and on it. I think that in more than that, it's probably way too early. But you know, the other thing you got to remember, um, a lot of this is based. Conference affiliation and the movement, a lot of it is football driven. Uh, and when you talk about those schools you just mentioned and you talk about football success, I don't know that anybody has had more success on a consistent basis than K State than all those other schools. And so, you know, granted, basketball is a piece of it, but, you know, Texas and OU went to the SEC because it was a football driven decision um, primarily. And and so I think that's the one thing we'll continue to tout is that when it comes to football, K State's as good or as strong as any of those any other teams in the conference right now. Gene Taylor talking with us right now, K State Athletic Director. If it is, hey, you guys stay together as a group, you go add teams, whatever expansion looks like in the Big Twelve. How much optimism is there about what that that T V payout would look like and how much does it affect you if it if it does get, you know, we've seen the figure mentioned that it would like cut the TV revenue in half without Texas at Oklahoma. Assuming that it is somewhere around that, like how much can that affect you guys in the future? Well, I mean, I think, you know, it's, those are big numbers, obviously. Um, and it's somewhat scary, but, you know, we managed to live through a pandemic and lost a lot more money than that. So, um, you know, I think we just have to adjust. And, and I do think it would be a short lived deal once the conference gets established and, TV, but TV packages are going to change, you know, a lot of areas. Uh, you know, they're going away from the linear and they're going to more, you know, digital and online. And so uh, I think as these new TV deals get redone, uh, I don't know that those big dollars will be there for no matter who we are. Uh, but yeah, I think we have to, you know, really start thinking through, you know, how do we create the make up those revenue? We not make it all up, but you know, where are the other areas that we can make up as much as we can, whether it's, you know, in a in a, in a conference uh, or or in other ways. Uh, so we have to just kind of think about that and start planning for that uh, at some point down the road. You know, one thing I, I found interesting that Max Olson was writing about today was a lot of hurt feelings, which are, are obvious and going to be there no matter what happens when somebody is leaving the conference. But he mentioned, you know, Bob was really good friends with Chris Del Conte and Joe Castiglione, and he was not happy with not just that this happened, but how it happened. How much anger do you sense from you and, and your your cohorts, the other athletic directors in the conference right now, towards Del Conte and Castiglione and how Oklahoma and Texas operated throughout all of this? Well, I, I kind of mentioned that earlier. You know, the first you know, there was anger, there was surprise, there was frustration, all that. I think some of the ADs were closer to Chris and Joe than I was from a personal perspective. I mean, I was his colleague, you know, professional. I, you know, spent time with them, but some of the ADs in the league were, were good buddies. I mean, they would talk regularly. They would, you know, hang out, whether it was at meetings or conferences or whatever the case may be. And, you know, their feelings are hurt, and they felt that they were lied to in their face by, by, you know, conversations that they were having that had, you know, talked about the future of the Big 12 and talking about the playoff expansion and, and how that was going to be benefited, beneficial for the Big 10 because, or for the Big 12 because we only have 10 schools. And there's no need for the Big 12 to expand because if we go to 12 teams, that's more money. And uh, they were those kind of conversations between friends. And then all of a sudden, a week later, they're leaving. And then you're like, really? How does that happen? We're, we're friends. You know, maybe that you aren't going to tell them six, you know, two months into it, but the day before it breaks, you might want to call your buddies and say, "Hey, I hold this. I've been wanting to tell you, but I got to tell you, we're going to, you know." And that never happened. And that's where there were some really hurt feelings with some of the ads that were pretty tight in this league. And obviously, I would imagine that there have to be some toward ESPN as well for their potential role in this after Bob sends the the cease and desist. Letter to ESPN, I guess, how how do you feel toward ESPN and what may or may not have happened there in, in light of all this? Well, you know, if it, obviously, you know, Bob doesn't come out like that unless there's, you know, enough there. Uh, I would say I've not attributed those kind of conversations. But, yeah, it's frustrating. I mean, they're your TV partner. Um, and it feels like, you know, you're, when your TV partner is stabbed in the back, and that's, that's, that's hard to understand why they would do that when we're, you know, if we're all in this for the betterment of college football, that's not the best for college football. That's the best for ESPN. And, you know, we've given them a lot of inventory and helped them make a lot of money. And to do that uh, just doesn't make any sense to me. But, you know, 
that is who it is. And I will tell you that other conference commissioners are now looking at this expansion and maybe you're going to put a hold on it because ESPN was going to benefit it solely out of the expansion. And I think they're thinking, you know, maybe we ought to put this in the upper market. Let's just see what's out there. That's the kind of thing that's going, I think, being talked about. How much do you try to do behind the scenes to, to position K-State for whether that's going to be to another league, whatever the option may be outside of if, if the Big 12 were to not stick together, I guess. How much do you have to be positioning yourself right now to, whether it's the Pac-12 or whoever, making sure that they realize, like, hey, K-State has a lot to offer? Well, I think you just, you know, you, you got to keep telling the story, right? Obviously, we were getting in the fall season, and I said this would be a great year to have a great year. Uh, you know, nothing's going to happen this year. I'd be, be shocked, obviously. You know, I don't think, again, when, you know, I do have friends in other leagues, and when I talk to those ADs that I'm close with, they're, you know, I'm here and they're not doing anything, you know. Uh, so, but I think we just have to keep telling our story and you know, about who we are as a as an institution, first of all, um, and, and as an athletic program and a fan base and all the wonderful things that people love about K-State, conferences want to see that and and so i think you just keep telling that story as much as you can what would be the the message that you have right now in general to fans that look around and say well like look i see these articles that talk about i mean just today we were talking today about the athletic article where it's mentioning potentially oklahoma state texas tech tcu baylor the pac-12 west virginia acc kansas iowa state big 10 but k-state not really being mentioned much there. What what would be the message just to kind of assuage the the fears or the concerns that fans would have on that front? Well, I, I think you know when you look at those schools, we're positioned in a lot of ways better than all of those, uh, and I think that's what you have to understand. We've won more, you know, Big Twelve football championships than some of those schools. Our fan base is probably travels a lot better, maybe with the exception of an Iowa State. Uh, we're all in similar uh, communities in terms of. TV exposures and eyes, et cetera. So, you know, I don't know why that gets left out. Uh, it is frustrating because I would say we've had as much success, if not more. When you look at the academic profile of our athletic programs, we're one of the tops in the Big 12 in terms of APR graduation rates, GPAs. Uh, obviously, the number of championships that we've been in, say, tournaments, and all of those things are, you know, we're as strong as any of those. Um, on a regular basis. And so, you know, it's frustrating that the media writes it that way, but I think when they, you know, if they were to dig down into it and make some comparisons, they'd see that we're absolutely as good, if not better in a lot of ways than a lot of old schools. But, um, you know, that's, that's the story. It was kind of that way, you know, the last time around. And we just have to keep putting our resume out there, so to speak, and making sure people understand who K-State is. 